please leave the more main floor of the chambers. Thank you. Sean. Madam Majority Leader. Do All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amphrey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Reverend Tell, are you? How are you doing, sir? Constantinides. Carnegie. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Present. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Gibson. Here. Jonai. Grudenchik. Holden. Kalos. King. Ku. Thank you. Kozlowitz. Kalos. Lanceman. Lander. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Here. Perkins. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Salamanca, Torres, here, Traeger, here, Ulrich, Jonai, Vallone, Van Bramer, Williams, Jaeger, Matteo, Combo, present. Speaker Johnson, here. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. No? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Please rise for the invocation. Today's invocation will be delivered by Abdel Rahman Badawi from the Muslim American Society Youth Center located at 1933 Bath Avenue in Brooklyn. I begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. All praise belongs to God. We seek his help, his forgiveness, and his guidance. And we seek refuge in God from the evil within ourselves and the evil that manifests in our actions. We pray for his guidance in all our affairs. 
Allah tells us in the Holy Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum indallahi atqakum إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ O mankind, indeed we have created you from a male and a female, and we made you into peoples and tribes so that you may know one another. Truly the most noble of you in the sight of God is the most virtuous of you. Indeed God is knowing and acquainted. During this blessed month of Ramadan, we are reminded that indulgence in worldly pleasures is not the be-all and all of our existence in this world. Rather, this should be a time of reflection, spiritual growth, and connecting with the community. In the spirit of Ramadan, I ask Allah to grant us a greater appreciation for one another and to imbue within us the ability to see right from wrong and to grant us also the strength to pursue that right. O oh Allah, grant these men and women the guidance, wisdom, and strength to pursue justice, justice, compassion, and sound judgment. Ameen. Thank you. You may be seated. Now we will have the motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record by Council Member Brannon. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I am proud to represent one of the largest and longest standing Muslim communities in the entire country. And I'd like to thank Cleric Abdel Rahman Badawi for being here today. And I wish all of my Muslim brothers and sisters celebrating a Ramadan Mubarak. And I make the motion that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Thank you. And now we will have the adoption of the minutes by Council Member Brad Lander. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I move that the minutes of the stated meeting of April 11, 2018 be adopted as printed and without the post-meeting cartoon margin notes proposed by Council Members Reynoso and Holton. Thank you, Council Member Lander. We will now have messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Pre-considered M55, taxes and the discount rate. Uh, finance. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call ups? M56 and M57. Uh, coupled on uh, a call up vote, and at this time I would ask for a roll call vote on all items on today's land use call up calendar. Adams? Aye on all. Ampri Samuel? Aye on all. Ayala? Barron. Aye on all. Borelli. Brennan. Cabrera. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Constantinides. Aye on all. Carnegie. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Cabrera. Permission to vote on all items and resolutions in today's calendar? Yes. Aye or no? Thank you. John Aye. I and all except for reconsidered resolution 360 and 361. At this time, we're only voting on the land use call ups at this time. In that case, I and all. Thank you. 
Gordanjic. Aye. Holden. Kalos. Aye and all. King. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Ayala. Aye. Lanceman. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Aye. Moya. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Madam Majority Leader, permission to vote on all land use call ups and items on today's calendar. Aye. Oh. <laughs> yes, permission granted. Aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. I vote aye on all land use call ups, and with permission, I'd like to vote aye on all items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Go ahead, proceed. I said I vote aye on all land use call ups, and with permission, I'd like to vote aye on all items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Permission granted, and Councilmember Reynoso, I need an official aye on all from you. Aye on all from Antonio Reynoso. Thank you. Thank you. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Aye. Whatever. Ulrich. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Williams. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. I vote aye. <laughs> Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 39 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. We will now have communication from the speaker. Uh, good afternoon. First, I would like to, if folks could, shh. Quiet in the chambers. First, I'd like to take a moment to remember all the victims of last Friday's tragedy at Santa Fe High School in Texas. Yet again, we all stand and mourn for those who have fallen due to gun violence. To those who say that it's too early to talk about the need for common sense federal gun legislation, I, of course, vehemently disagree. It's always too late. It's too late for the kids in Santa Fe. It was too late for the kids in Parkland. And my heart breaks for all the children and families and teachers affected by the horror that took place. We will continue to keep them in our thoughts and prayers, but we know that thoughts and prayers are not enough. Action is what we need, and we are calling on political leaders to take action to end these incidents of horrific and needless violence. Today we're also thinking about two members of the NYPD, Michael Colangelo and John Martinez, who died in a tragic car accident on what was supposed to be one of the happiest weekends of their lives. Michael had just gotten married, and he leaves behind his bride. Our thoughts and prayers are with her, these officers' families and friends, and the entire New York City Police Department. Also, let us remember a hero we recently lost due to illness after answering the call on September 11, 2001, as a New York City Police Department officer, Scott Blackshaw spent six weeks at Ground Zero. Scott battled cancer. He contracted from being on the pile and has passed away at 52 years old. Our thoughts and prayers are with Scott and his entire family. 
In the last few days, we lost a major labor leader in New York City, Thomas Van Arsdale, who was the former president of the New York City Central Labor Council, the former business manager of Local 3 of the IBW, and he was a resident of Electchester in Queens. And uh, I would also like to extend my deep condolences to a member of the City Council's Community Engagement Division, Lynn Shulman. Lynn's partner of almost 30 years, Adelaide Cannot, passed away unexpectedly a little more than a week ago. Adelaide was a legend, truly a legend in Queens, having served in this body for former council member Margarita Lopez. In the last many years, she worked at the Fortune Society, helping so many people who were formerly incarcerated. Lynn, we are so, so sorry for your loss, and we will forever keep Adelaide in our hearts. Let us take a moment of silence, if folks could please rise. Thank you all very much. Thank you. At this time, I would like to recognize two members of the New York City Council's Finance Division who are leaving us, Jessica Ackerman and Steve Reister. Woo! Jessica and Steve both served as senior financial analysts for three years here in the Council. Jessica worked on the Youth and Higher Education Committees, and Steve worked on the Public Safety and Justice System Committees. We thank Jessica and Steve for their service and wish them well as they return to their home states of Virginia and Ohio, respectively. Let's give Jessica and Steve a big round of applause. Finally today marks the third annual Foster Youth Shadow Day here at City Hall. The council is really, really proud to host Foster Youth Shadow Day and partner with Fostering Youth Success Alliance and Children's Aid. Today we have 15 extraordinary young people. I'm really happy to be joined by my new friend here um, who have spent time in the foster care system uh, they have been sharing their stories with us while also representing the experience of their peers. We are also inspired by these young adults and we've learned so much. I want to thank them for being here. I want to thank my fellow council members for participating. And before we give uh, these amazing young people a round of applause, I was wondering if Councilmember Levin wanted to say anything uh, about today because he's been instrumental in this. Well, thank you, Speaker. Uh, I just want to welcome all the young people um, to the council to uh, not only for you to learn about what happens here at the council and how uh, we conduct the people's business here in, in New York City, but also so that we may learn from you, uh, learn about your experiences, uh, learn um, how we can improve um, the foster care system in New York and indeed uh, all of the services that go into supporting our young people. Um, the, the first Foster Youth Shadow Day resulted in seven pieces of legislation being passed out of this council and signed into law. Uh, we look forward to continuing to work with you um, so, that, uh, so that we can in be informed with new pieces of legislation in this term uh, to continue to meet the needs of youth in foster care. Um, and so I want to thank all of you. I want to thank the Children's Aid Society uh, for helping uh, uh, put this together as well, the Jewish Board uh, Fostering Youth Success Alliance, uh, as well as uh, council staff uh, who helped put this together. In particular, I want to thank uh, Lynn Schulman, who, uh, who, who put in a lot of work uh, to make sure that today is a success. But I want to thank everybody that's been involved 
in putting this all together uh, for another successful Foster Youth Shadow. And Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for your incredible support of the foster youth, uh, the youth in foster care uh, and, and who have aged out of foster care uh, in New York City. Thank you. Can we give a big, hearty welcome round of applause for the young people that are with us today and how amazing they are? <laughs> welcome to each and every one of you. And I especially want to thank Anna, my, my shout out today, thanks. <laughs> so we are now going to jump into our docket for the day. The council will vote on several finance items. Introduction 882, sponsored by Councilmember Drum, the chair of our finance committee, would change the date of initial eligibility for the small business tax credit against the commercial rent tax, the CRT, changing it from July 1st, 2018 to June 1st, 2018 to align with the CRT fiscal tax year. The council will vote on seven Article 11 exemptions, Seneca Avenue, Lafayette Morrison, Teller Avenue, and Aquinas, all in council member and chair of the Land Use Committee Salamanca's district. We're also gonna be voting on Idwood House in Councilmember Rodriguez's district, Essie Jeffries in Councilmember Levine's district, and Rockaway Village in Councilmember Richards's district. I wanna thank the staff who worked on this, especially Rebecca Chasen, uh, the council for our finance committee. The council will also be voting on the following land use items. PRC Tiffany Street, the council will be voting to approve an Article 11 tax exemption to facilitate the development of a new 100% affordable housing project with 161 residential units in Chair Salamanca's district. Bethany Place, the council will be voting to approve an Article 11 tax exemption to facilitate the preservation of one building totaling 23 residential units at 100% affordable housing in Councilmember Perkins's district. Two buildings, Tenants United HDFC, the council will be voting for approval of a UDAP project and a tax exemption for two six-story buildings in Councilmember Rivera's district. CSH, the council, the council will be voting to approve a tax exemption <clears throat> for two small buildings that are part of a larger portfolio of preserved affordable housing administered by the Corporation for Supportive Housing in Council Member Amprey Samuels District. MPLP Uptown Cluster 6, the council will be voting for approval of a tax exemption and a UDOT project to facilitate the disposition of six city-owned buildings totaling 82 units. The units will be preserved at 100% affordable housing, and these are in Council Member Perkins' district. 615 West 150th Street, we will also be voting to approve an Article 11 tax exemption to facilitate the preservation of two buildings totaling 80 units of 100% affordable housing. The buildings are located in Council Member Levine's district. I want to thank the land use staff who worked on these items, uh, Amy Levitan, Julie Lubin, Jeff Yoon, Brian Paul, and Liz Lee. The, today the council is going to be voting on uh, the following legislation. First, introduction 210B, sponsored by Minority Leader Matteo, would require that property owners be given more time to make necessary repairs to sidewalks adjacent to their properties, increasing the time allowed from 45 days to 75 days, giving property owners an additional month. The purpose of this legislation is to allow more time for these owners to complete sidewalk repairs. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Malik Nasruddin, Jonathan Mazzarano, and Emily Rooney. Uh, next, another bill. It's, it's uh, Staten Island GOP Day here at the Council. Uh, next, introduction 189A, also supported and sponsored by Council Member and Minority Leader Stephen Matteo, would require that automated external defibrillators, AEDs, be provided to youth softball leagues playing on city-owned land at no cost. Cardiac arrest is the second highest cause of death in athletes under the age of 14 years old. Softball is the second highest incidence rate of commotio cordis events, and 75% of people who experience this type of cardiac arrest are under 18 years old. An automatic external defibrillator, AED, is the only effective treatment for restoring a regular heart rhythm during a sudden cardiac arrest event, and it's easy. Shh. Quiet in the chambers. And it's easy to operate for someone with no medical background. 
I want to uh, thank the staff, Z Emanuel Halu, Emily Balkin, Christopher Sartori, Patrick Mulvihill, and Jeanette Merrill for working on that piece of legislation. Introduction 14A, sponsored by Councilmember Borelli, would require that mandatory citywide campaign debates be simultaneously broadcast on city-owned or operated television channels with the largest public audience. In 2017, some of the citywide debates were sponsored and aired by cable television stations, leaving New Yorkers who did not subscribe to that service unable to watch their, that debate on their own televisions. This bill would ensure that no matter who the primary broadcast sponsor is, the citywide debates will be viewable by as many New Yorkers as possible. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Brad Reed, Elizabeth Cronk, Zach Harris, and Rachel Cordero. And lastly, introduction 895, sponsored by Councilmember Danique Miller, would extend health insurance coverage for surviving family members of DOT Bridges electrician George Staub, who was killed on the Hutchinson River Parkway <clears throat> on the Hutchinson River Parkway on April 4th during the performance of his duties. The administrative code already recognizes and authorizes health insurance to be provided to family members of uniformed employees of the Police, Fire, Correction, and Sanitations Department who have been killed in the line of duty, and we want to ensure that Mr. Staub's wife and two surviving children are protected. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Malcolm Butehorn, Kevin Gutowski, Kendall Stevenson, and Tirza Nasser. That concludes our agenda for today stated, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. I turn it back to you, Madam Majority Leader. It's nice to see you up there today. Thank you. Pay attention. <laughs> We're now going to have, I'm used to sitting with my colleagues. <laughs> Before we get to the discussion of general orders, I want to recognize Claremont International High School that is here with us today. Can you all wave? <laughs> and I want to take majority leader privilege just to introduce to you all my uh, mentee for today, this is Jalika Hamilton, who's graduated from LaGuardia College and headed to Queens College. Yeah. This is the new face of leadership here. So now we are going to call on Council Member Matteo, then followed by Council Member Deutsch. Thank you, Majority Leader Cumbo. Um, two years ago, this council passed legislation, Speaker Johnson, who was then chair of the Health Committee, and I introduced legislation that requires an operable automated external defibrillator, or AD, be present at every Little League game and practice played on a city-owned field. Under that legislation, which became Local Law 57 of 2016, ADs and training sessions for coaches and league officials and their proper use are now provided free of charge by the Parks Department. As I said on many occasions, my intention has always been to continue to expand AED access and providing them for youth softball leagues is the ne next logical step. Intro 189A, which we are voting on today, will do just that. This bill will build on the great success we have already had with the Little League AED program. In fiscal year 2018, Parks deployed more than 1,500 AEDs to Little Leagues across the city, held more than 435 AED training sessions, and certified more than 3,000 people, including coaches, Little League officials, and parents in their use. And just as important, the Little League AED program is inexpensive and efficient. AED certification training is required every two years, and the AEDs themselves must be replaced every every seven years or so, which means the annual cost of this program is about $600,000. And in the two Little League seasons, not one AD has been lost or damaged, and no league or team has been violation of the law. According to Parks, about 100 youth softball leagues that field about 500 teams would be added to this program under this introduction. The additional annual cost would be about $300,000 per year. I will continue to introduce further legislation and to work with all of you on ways we can make ADs accessible for all New Yorkers. The reason is simple, AD save lives. The second bill we are voting today is intro 210B, which will give homeowners more time to correct sidewalk violations. Last year alone, the Department of Transportation issued nearly 15,000 violations to property owners for defective sidewalks. 
Under current law, owners have only 45 days to repair these sidewalks before a lien is placed on their homes. This is simply not enough time. It is not enough time to get quotes from contractors, compare prices, and to schedule and complete repair work. And no work can be done during the cold months and inclement weather, which this year extended from November to one of the harshest early springs we have experienced. The time constraint is exacerbated even further if the homeowner does not have the money to make the repairs readily available, which is a reality for so many families or seniors on fixed incomes. Intro 210 will extend the time homeowners have to correct an unsafe sidewalk violation before a lien is imposed from 45 days to 75 days. This is fairer, more reasonable, and less punitive than the current law. I want to again thank the speaker, uh, Health Committee Chair Mark Levine, Transportation Committee Chair Udanis Rodriguez for their support. I also want to thank Jeff Baker and, and Malak Nasherdeen and the rest of the staff who worked on these important bills as well as my own staff. And I urge all my uh, colleagues to vote in favor of these two bills. Thank you. Thank you, Minority Leader Mario. Are there any others for discussion of general orders? Seeing none, we are now going to have the report of special committees. None. We're now going to have the reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, Intro 895, Survivor Benefits. A couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Intro 882, Commercial Rent Tax Credit. A couple of general orders. Preconsidered M55 and preconsidered Resos 359, 360, and 361, Real Estate Taxes. A couple of general orders. Preconsidered LU95 and Reso 364 through preconsidered LU101 and Reso 370, Various Tax Exemptions. A couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, Intro 14A, Debate Broadcasting. Amended and coupled in general orders. Report of the Committee on Health, Intro 189A, Defibrillators at Softball Fields. And congratulations to Minority Leader Matteo, who has been very passionate on this. Amended and coupled in general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU66 and Reso 371, and LU68 and Reso 372, Tax Exemptions. Coupled in general orders. LU71 and Reso 373, through LU80 and Reso 376, various UDAPs, and another tax exemption. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 210B, Sidewalk Repairs. Matteo Day, amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, Intro 720, Site Safety Training. Laid over. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Couple of general orders, and at this time, I would ask for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Adams. Aye and all. Ambry Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Say it. Aye on all. <laughs> Barron. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I vote aye on all with the exception of land use 68. I think that as we talk about the increasing number of homeless people, talk about those who are rent burdened, and talk about people who can't afford to pay their rent. We are now creating another situation where in Harlem, which I believe has a AMI of about probably 60% 60, 60 of the AMI for the median population, we're going to be introducing housing at 120% of AMI. So with that, I vote no on Land Use 68 and the accompanying resolution. I think it contributes to displacement and gentrification, and I vote aye on all the others. Thank you. Borelli. Uh, I on all except uh, pre-considered Reso 360. Brennan. I on all. Chin. I on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. I on all. Deutsch. I on all. Diaz. I don't know, except on resolution 360 and 361. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye on all. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Aye on all. Jonai. I on all uh, except for resolution 360 and 361, if I can explain my vote. 
I think um, charging 18% interest on real estate tax defaults mm -hmm. is not the right way to go. Some of these homeowners fall behind for good reason, and it's not because uh, they choose not to pay their real estate taxes timely. And 18% will just further uh, undermine their ability to get out of this debt, let alone be able to get a life preserver and assistance to pay back these taxes timely. So I would encourage other colleagues to do the same, understanding that this type of penalty and interest rate, which is compounded annually, is truly going to hurt some of our home ownership and create more homelessness in the city. Gordenchik. I and all accept preconsidered Reso 360. Holden. I and all accept resolutions 360 and 361. Kalos. I and all. Who? I on all. Lander. I on all. Levin. How about I on all? Levine. I on all. Maisel. Yes. Menchaca. I on all. Moya. I on all with the exception of uh, pre-considered LU 99. Baron. Yes, I want to change my vote for the reasons that have been stated. I'm voting no on 360 and 361. Thank you. Okay. Powers. I and all. Richards. I and all except reconsidered Revo 360. Rivera. I vote aye on all except for land use 66, of which I've abstained from the decision-making process. My husband's affiliated with Canberra Property Group uh, that is the subject of this legislative vote, and for this reason, I elect to recuse myself from land use 66. But I vote aye on all, everything else. Rose. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. I on all accept preconsidered pre -considered resolution on 360 and 361. Thank you so much. And I'll just need a further confirmation from Council Member Rolls. If you could just speak into the mic. Yes. I on all except for preconsidered resolutions 360 and 361. Thank, Thank you. you. You've had a wonderful spokeswoman today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Rosenthal. Aye on all. Torres. I vote aye on all. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Uh, I vote aye on all except free considered Reso 360. Uh, and I also uh, ask for unanimous consent to vote on all land use call ups. Permission granted. Thank you. For the land use, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Valone. Aye on all, with the exception of Reso 360 and 361. Jaeger. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I vote aye on all with the exception of Resolution 360 and 361, and uh, I wish to associate myself with the comments of my colleague, Councilmember Jonai, as has been stated, um, and as I've stated previously in conversations in this council, I, I believe that these interest rates are usurious. Um, when, my feeling, and I'm a renter, so I don't have the privilege of paying real property taxes like so many other New Yorkers, uh, but my feeling is that when people don't pay their property taxes, it's not because they choose not to pay their property taxes, it's because they're having some tough times. Um, generally speaking, people pay their property taxes because the penalty for not doing so is the city will sell the lien. Quiet in the chambers. Thank you. The city will sell the lien and people will lose their property. So when people have the trouble of paying their property taxes on time, 
the city shouldn't put its foot on the neck of the homeowner. And for that reason, I uh, respectfully uh, and with uh, admiration for my colleagues who are unable to join me on this, I vote no on 360-361. Uh, and I proudly join in voting in favor of uh, Mr. Minority Leader's bill, which I co-sponsored, to make it easier for people to repair the sidewalk violations in front of their homes. We know and we've all heard anecdotally and we've all handled cases like this in our offices uh, and myself as a community board member before I joined the council of people who received the sidewalk violation notices and the clock starts ticking immediately and they're unable to comply on time and uh, the next thing they know they get a bill from the city for uh, you know an, an untoward amount. Uh, this bill will make it fairer, easier, uh, more responsible for people to comply with the law and I congratulate Mr. Minority Leader on uh, introducing this bill. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Matteo. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. We're going to allow some time for the votes to be tallied. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of pre-considered resolution 360, which was adopted by a vote of 30 in the affirmative, 12 in the negative, and zero abstentions. For pre-considered resolution 361 was adopted by a vote of 35 affirmative, seven negative, and zero abstentions. And for land use 68 and resolution 372, which was adopted by a vote of 41 affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. For land use 99 and resolution 368, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. The revised land use call up vote is 42 in the affirmative and zero negative. Give us one moment. Okay, we will now move into introduction and reading of bills. All items have been referred to the committees as indicated on the printed agenda. We're gonna have discussion of resolutions. Please remind the members that anyone wishing to vote no or abstain on today's resolution should approach the dais before the meeting ends to register their vote. For resolution 190, a resolution calling on the United States Supreme Court to protect public sector collective bargaining in Janus versus been? American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The A's have it. And now we're going to go to a resolution acknowledging workers' gains through the American labor movement. All those in favor? Any opposed? The ayes have it. Shh. Okay, and we have a vote revision. Just want to bring to your attention for land use 68 and resolution 372, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. For land use 66 and resolution 371, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, and one abstention. Now, moving on to general discussions. Starting with Council Member Ku. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, I stand here today to ask my colleagues to join me in supporting three bills. The first bill, Intro, intro 942, 
would require the city to develop and publish a comprehensive plan regarding the distribution and use of city issue parking permits. Until there's a serious investment in public transportation, many of my constituents must still rely on cars to get around North East Queens and parking is at a premium. We must find a way to ensure that our police officers and teachers are able to go to work, while also ensuring that the number of permits that are issued makes sense and that we stop any abuse of these permits. Well, so uh, 363 is a common sense legislation that will call upon the NYC DOE to enforce an existing regulation which requires students on school buses to wear seat belts until the bus comes to a destination stop. And the last uh, bill is a resolution 362. I will defer to Council Member uh, Holden to explain the details. Uh, lastly, as May is Asian American Pacific Heritage Month, I invite you all to join us next Wednesday, May 30th, in Chambers for a celebration. Yes, there will be plenty of food available. Thank you. I most certainly will be there. You do a very fine celebration. We'll now hear from Council Member Chin. Thank you, good afternoon. Um, I want to uh, ask my colleague uh, to take a look at intro 932, legislation to curb parking permit abuse that plagues our residents, small businesses, and communities. Any given day, more than 160,000 legally issued placards are in circulation within New York City. They are given to court workers, teachers, police officers, and staff at very city agencies. When used properly, placards allow government employees to temporarily park in certain spaces in order to do their jobs. However, when these people abuse this privilege, they park at one spot for days at a time or park at the crosswalk, bus stop, bus lane, and no standing zones, and in front of fire hydrants. At best, Placard abuse is an inconvenience to drivers who follow the rules. At worst, it's a safety hazard for the community. Worst of all, it is nearly impossible to see and distinguish real placards from fabricated ones. Intro 932 will allow the city to immediately revoke a person's placard parking permit and prohibit the issuance of new permits to anyone who is guilty of misusing their city-issued parking permits more than three times in one calendar year or using a fraudulent or altered placards. In neighborhoods hit with congestions, misuse of these permits shows a blatant disregard for residents whose family and businesses depend on access to parking spots in their own neighborhood. I want to thank Nusar Chadari for her work on this bill and uh, I hope that my colleague will help me to curb placard abuse uh, by signing on to Intro 932. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank two of my interns, Nibrao, Kareem, and Leanne Ma for their work in our district. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member. Now we will hear from Council Member Levin. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Majority Leader. I want to uh, take this opportunity to welcome uh, my friend, uh, my shadow for the day, Anna Martin. Anna is a 10th grade student at Linden High School, and uh, she has a lot of uh, great dreams and aspirations. Uh, she wants to be a social worker uh, when uh, she enters uh, her career, and, uh, and I think that is a fantastic uh, profession and a fantastic objective. And I want to uh, take this opportunity to introduce her and have her uh, say a few words. Um, okay, I just wanted to um, just speak and say um, thank you for everybody involved on letting me um, participate in this wonderful event um, for the day. Um, um, it, was, it, was a, it was a very great experience. Um, I learned a lot. Um, thank you. Thank you.
I just want to say thank you. You have tremendous courage to speak here today before the council. And we all know, as members, the first time we come into this chamber, it can be quite an intimidating experience. So for all of you to be here, to speak on the microphone, to introduce yourself to members, job. takes a great deal of courage. And we appreciate it. We support it. And we thank you so much for being here. It's an honor to have you here. And hopefully one day you'll be sitting in these same chairs as us. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Deutsch. Thank you. I do feel intimidated by our <laughs> acting public advocates. So, uh, congestion and lack of parking pl uh, uh, plagues nearly every neighborhood here in New York City. It can be particularly frustrating for drivers when the Department of Transportation is conducting milling and paving work while closing down streets and removing parking spots for several weeks. Intro 935 aims to minimize the effect of this road work on local residents by suspending alternate side parking regulations within a five block radius of any DOT resurfacing work. When parking is reduced, it can contribute to additional traffic as drivers circle endlessly looking for a parking spot. But Intro 935 will have the added benefit of reducing that congestion by providing drivers with ample parking options that would not otherwise be available to them. I invite my colleagues to support this common sense law and sign on to intro 935 as a co-sponsor. I want to thank Majority Leader Lori Cumbo for joining me as a sponsor on this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Deutsch. It's an honor to partner with you. We now have Councilmember Kalos. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, I am partnering with our public advocate, Tish James, on our reintroduction for Bill 941, uh, which would actually require that when we have public meetings, the city would be required to provide child care. Uh, as many of you may know, when you go to meetings in the evenings, uh, oftentimes you won't really see parents out, and that's because if they want to show up, it will actually cost them money to be involved in their government. And as we look around this body with a dwindling representation for women, uh, it should be 26. Uh, majority of this city is women, but uh, you see fewer and fewer. And uh, sadly, child care responsibilities more often than not fall to women. And we can't hope to have more people involved in government, uh, let alone parents, if we don't offer the child care when we have government meetings. This would not cost the community boards or anyone else additional funding, Department of Youth and Community Development would provide it. But uh, I urge my colleagues to please sign on and also consider bringing child care to your meetings. We, we do it in my district and it helps parents uh, participate in our local events. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos. Child care is music to my ears. Councilmember Espinal. Thank you, Majority Leader Cumbo. First of all, foremost, I want to congratulate your mentee who is going to Queens College. As a former graduate of Queens College, I can tell you only the best go and graduate from there. So congrats. Um, I, I just want to point everyone's attention to intro 936, and it will phase out and ban plastic straws from eating and drinking establishments in New York City. Uh, right now, there is a growing movement uh, to get plastic straws out of our uh, uh, restaurants and bars, and this means that we'll have millions of straws uh, outside of our city, out of our city, and will not make its way into our oceans. Uh, there are some bad actors in this room, like Heim Deutsch, who is sipping on his straw. Hopefully, it's his last straw. Um, <laughs> And, uh, well, there are many people around me with straws. But uh, th there are many great alternatives, like paper straws and metal straws and pasta straws and compostable straws that are available that we can make that switch to. Uh, as, as I said, the business community is getting on board. They're making the switch. Uh, there's a big growing movement uh, across the country. And now it's time for us here in New York City to lead on the issue. So intro 936, hopefully everyone can sign on. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councilmember Espinal. And now we'll hear from Councilmember Lander. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and I'm uh, thrilled that Councilmember Espinal is uh, helping strengthen the Plastics Caucus in the uh, City Council. It's an important issue. I want to invite members to sign on to intros 946 and 947, which would strengthen safety and workers' rights for underground utility safety workers. We had a public hearing earlier this year about this set of workers, most of whom used to be employed by Con Ed or National Grid. They're the folks who mark and identify where the utilities are underground before we dig up the streets. 
And right now, as a result of that work having been outsourced to one of the a big, large multinational, they're earning minimum wage, they don't get health care, they don't have paid sick days, they're on call, they don't get advance notice of their schedule, and they have no training whatsoever uh, about how to do a pretty critical job that uh, puts the public at risk. So these two bills would both prohibit on-call scheduling and require that they get some basic safety training before they identify where the utilities are underground and we cut up our streets. So please join me in signing on to 946 and 947. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Lander. And we'll now hear from Councilmember Holden. Thank you, Majority Leader Cumbo. I am proud to uh, today to announce my first set of bills as a council member representing District 30. First, I introduce Intro 939, which addresses a big issue in my neighborhood and most neighborhoods around the city of New York. And we have it's a parking issue, illegal curb cuts. Uh, this bill addresses uh, the police response to that. We've had several uh, members of my uh, area that um, or constituents that have gotten tickets at illegal curb cuts. So um, this bill will mandate that the NYPD come up with a better system, working with DOB, in which a uh, responding officer can determine whether a curb cut is legal before issuing a summons. And that's an issue in, in the days of computer now, we certainly should be able to do that. Next together, this is a uh, resolution, next together with council members Chin, my colleagues, and Ku, I am proud to introduce a resolution calling upon the United States Congress to pass and the president to sign H.R. 2358. This resolution would provide an award of a single congressional gold medal to the Chinese American veterans of World War II in recognition of their dedicated service during World War II. It is important to recognize brave Chinese Americans who served in the military during the war. By the war's end, over 13,000 Chinese Americans were serving in all the branches of our armed forces. Approximately 40% of these soldiers were not native-born citizens, making the ultimate sacrifice for a country that only a few years earlier had repealed the Chinese Exclusion Act. Um, and of course, you know, the, during the war, they, most um, uh, non-white uh, uh, soldiers were segregated, and that was an issue. And certainly, this medal will ultimately be housed at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History, along with other congressional medals. And finally, along with council members Vallone, Jonai, Ulrich, and Yeager, I introduced 940 calling on a commission to examine the cost of renovating jail facilities on Rikers Island relative to the cost of building borough-based jails. Thank this you. Okay. <laughs> You're cutting me off. Okay. Thank you, and congratulations All right. All right. on the introduction of your new bills. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, council member Rose. Thank you. Um, it's good to see you in that chair. Thank you. It feels uh, good to be up here. <laughs> Great. Um, I want to thank Council Member Levin for, for arranging for us to have this day. I think that um, there's a lot that goes on in the foster care system that we don't know. And I think this body has been very instrumental in, in legislating, trying to legislate some of the ills and, and the negatives um, it's, a, it's a system that's very hard to navigate, and it takes a lot of tenacity in order to do it. So I want to introduce to this body my, um, my young person, who is Victoria Winham. And um, I want to commend her and all of the attendees today for their tenacity to overcome and thrive in the foster care system. And uh, Victoria is on her way to pursuing her education to become a forensic anthropologist. Mm. And um, I, I want to thank Steve Levin for making this day possible. Thank you, Councilmember Rose. Thank you. And now we have Councilmember Ku briefly, and then we'll close with Councilmember Yeager. Thank you, Majority Leader. I just want to add on something uh, uh, Councilmember uh, Bob Holden just said. Um, uh, on, on the resolution 362 calls on Congress to pass and the President sign H.R. 2358, which will provide an award of a single congressional gold medal to recognize the contributions of Chinese American veterans during World War II. Uh, please do not forget that Chinese Exclusion Act was the first federal law in the United States to restrict 
immigration on the basis of race, and that this law was still in effect when World War II began. Despite this, almost one third of Chinese American population at that time enlisted in the war to serve our country. But only one, Captain Francis Wei, was ever recognized for his service. Awarding these fine tigers and war heroes a collective congressional gold medal would be a huge step towards recognizing the contributions of Asian Americans to our country. Thank you, Council yeah. Member. Thank you. Thank you. And now we will hear from Council Member Yeager. Thank you, Madam President. Along the lines of uh, the wise common sense legislation that Mr. Minority Leader had passed in this council today, I am introducing <laughs> intro 953, which would uh, place greater regulations and restraints on the creation of new driveway curb cuts. This is a problem we see in my neighborhoods in southern Brooklyn. Uh, I know that neighborhoods in Queens and the Bronx have this often where people just cut the curb in front of their houses, they create themselves a parking spot, um, or even if they apply for the permission to do so with the Department of Transportation, uh, the, the Department of Buildings, they're not getting the community notification that uh, is necessary, in my view, uh, for the community to be able to opine whether or not this makes sense. And uh, too many permits granted on one block would suddenly mean no more street parking on that block. My bill would require that upon an application being filed with the department, the, uh, the department would have to notify the community board, the community board would have an opportunity to opine on it, and the department would have to take the opinion of the community board into consideration before granting an application. It would also require that if a curb cut is unlawful, the department would notify the homeowner of the unlawful curb cut, and if the homeowner does not repair the curb cut, similar to what the city does with a sidewalk defect, the city will go and repair the curb cut back to its original state, and build the homeowner accordingly, which I think is an appropriate penalty uh, at the very least for an illegal curb cut. So I urge you, my colleagues, to join on to intro 953. Uh, I think this is the common sense legislation that our communities expect of us, and I look forward to a prompt hearing. Thank you so much, Madam President. Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you very much. I just want to acknowledge the fact that this past week, last Thursday, we had the opening of the Prince Joshua Avito Community Center. You may recall that Prince Joshua Avito was only six years old when he was killed in an elevator in the NYCHA Development Boulevard houses. And at that time, we challenged the mayor to step up and add the money that was needed for the construction of a community center. Uh, my predecessor, former council member Charles Barron had designated $3.5 million, and NYCHA had designated a pot of money also for the construction of a community center, but they pulled their money out. So the initial uh, pot of money was just languishing there, but we did prevail upon the governor, upon the mayor to add some money, and former speaker uh, Melissa Mark, we were out of money, and um, you know this body also as I noted a few weeks ago, um, under the direction of our speaker, did add $400,000 as well. So the center is open, it is beautiful, it has a regulation college-sized gymnasium, it has a media room for children to be able to go and uh, create their own music, they have a dance studio room, they have an arts and crafts room, there are several community meeting rooms, there will be a portable stage and chairs that will be able to be brought out for productions to be uh, conducted there, and it's just a beautiful state-of-the-art facility. So I want to thank all of those who contributed their effort to making it a reality, and I uh, want to invite you to come by. It's 876 Prince Joshua Avito Way in Brooklyn between Stanley and Workman. It's a beautiful place and a great testimony to a very tragic situation, but his name will live on in that street naming as well as in the name of his community center. Thank you. General discussions have concluded. I would just like to say it's been an honor to be here with you guys and as well as to um, shadow Majority Leader Professor Campbell. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Campbell, combo. Um, finals week is over. Sorry for calling you professor. Um, <laughs> um, I also like to 
um, thank her for teaching me the ins and outs of policy and the making of it and how it affects New York City. Um, it appreciates a lot that you took time out of your day to do this for me, and it just shows that there are effective New York City citizens and government congressmen and women that are trying to make change, good change. Um, now I'll turn it over to Speaker Johnson, and we'll close. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, due to upcoming, uh, due to the upcoming budget adoption, today's stated meeting will be held in recess. Thank you all. Can all of the mentees come forward for a photo? With yes, if member? everyone wants to come forward for a photo.